do I define family? Love, love and just never ending support and you can't define family. If you have a good family, an amazing family, there's no definition. It's, it's a blessing. My name is Dawn Fitch, and I am the owner and operator of Puka Pure and Simple, a natural bath and body company. We've got great natural products. I think it's fun, it's good, it's healthy. It's definitely a family business. It's like moms, aunts, cousins. So we're making a little statement about natural health, natural care, and being an entrepreneur. Like, you know, maybe at midlife you can start and do something different. And that's pretty much what I did. When I was in eighth grade, my father set us down. He said, kids, we're going to start a family business. And he had this chart. And on the top was a million dollars. And you're t selling this to three kids. We were like, oh, we're going to have a million dollars. We didn't realize, like, oh, we're going to have to work for years to get this. <laughs> but we worked together as a family with this business. There are five of us. I have an older sister and a younger brother. Donna Dawn, Douglas, Helen, Howard. The Fitch Five, we call us. My parents would have been married this year 54 years. So uh, we were really blessed to see like a really strong marriage. And my parents were friends and we saw that. We were laughing all the time. And my father was a big, a big laugher. This is my dad. He was in the army. In the army. Yeah, yeah. so this was him. He actually went to Germany and he tells us the stories. We sit down like, okay, dad, tell us again about Germany. But it was just really, he was very proud. He was really, really proud. What are some of your greatest memories that encapsulate exactly who your father was? <laughs> okay, I have a, when I was younger, I was a cheerleader, and it was the first game, and I was supposed to get my saddle shoes earlier. So we went on Saturday, there were no saddle shoes left, none in my size. So I went with my father, I'm quivering, I'm in tears, and I think I wore a size six. And the only saddle shoes they had were a, I think a four and a half. So the guy was like, this is all we have left. So I tried them on, I mean, literally, my feet were like this in these saddle <laughs> shoes, okay? <laughs> And my father's like, you know, Dawn, do they fit? And I'm like, yeah, Dad, they fit. I went to the game. I was in the competition. I'm jumping around, doing cartwheels in these shoes. I mean, literally, I am almost broke every toe. And when I got home, I was just in tears. I was in the bathroom because I knew that these shoes didn't fit. And I couldn't return them because I scuffed them up. And how was I going to tell my father now he had to buy all new saddle shoes? So he knocked on the door and he was just like, you know, why are you crying? And I was like, because the shoes don't fit. And he was like, Dawn, I knew the shoes don't fit, but I know that you wanted them for this day. Oh, it's gonna make me cry. I know that you wanted them for this day. Like that's who my father was. So he bought me the shoes. <laughs> We're all put here for a purpose, and you want to do good while you're here. My name is Bisa Butler, and I am a fiber artist. A fiber artist is basically that it's an artist that works with fabric, any kind of cloth-like material. I always start with a photo that inspires me. I'm really attracted to black and white photos, and then that idea of bringing the past forward and making it full and bright and alive again. I'm studying not only way, the way that person looks, but I'm also like trying to get the idea of what kind of life did they lead? Like, what kind of person is this? Is this a loving person? Was this person loved? So then my fabric goes along with what the personality is. Dawn is all light. She's laughter, like she's just pure beauty and happiness. And it's amazing to me, like, the things that she's overcome and that she keeps this, like, faith. And she's just, she's like a lecturer. I always felt like, yeah, you know people are gonna die, but my father passing, like, like that was the first, you know, it just left a hole. And it just made you feel like, you know what, this is gonna happen to all of us. 
he had gone through like a really bad year, like in and out of the hospital. And um, when he actually, the day he died was a great day. Like that was, and I think because he had been sick for so long, we were expecting it. But this day we were all there and I was gonna get up and I was gonna go home. And he said, you know what? He said, let's all go out to breakfast. And I was like, no, dad, I gotta go, I can't. He's like, no, I really want you to stay. And we're like, all right. So the five of us went out. And I feel like we always say that we thought he knew because he was just like, you know what, guys? He's like, we're an A-plus family. I'm like, who says that? We were like, okay, dad, yeah, we are. And, um, you know, we all went home and, um, my mother called later, I'm sorry. And um, he came upstairs and he sat in his favorite chair and he just closed his eyes. That was it. So, um, we, it was really peaceful for him. And we are happy that it was peaceful. It was hard for my mom because, you know, she had to call the ambulance and stuff, but he came upstairs and he sat down in his chair and he closed his eyes. Like, you can't ask for anything better. Like that's if I gotta go, that's the way I wanna go. Me too. So Me too. So yeah, it really uh If somebody's making something for you, who do you miss? Like who do you long for? And I thought it should be her dad. Because her loss was so significant and poignant, I felt like it had to be him. All the photos that I've seen of him, even his young photos, he was always very dapper and very put together. I see like a twinkle. He looks like he was funny. And also somebody who was driven. I mean, he's in full uniform. But he still has that smile that makes you want to smile when you look at it. So the fabrics that I want to choose for him, I want it to be masculine, yet still have brightness in it, still have energy and happiness within the fabric itself. Because he it seems to be an interesting combination of military, spit shine, but then also this warm, loving family man. I wanted to put his family close to his heart on his breast in the place of where his medals would be. Because you can't take your medals with you. You can't take your uniform with you. The only thing you can take with you when you pass is the love. This is called Abundant Blessings. The blessing connecting Dawn to her dad. And then the blessing we have to connect with people living and dead. This is a memory of Dawn's father and for all of, of her family and anybody who gets to see it. Now they get to know a little bit more about him. How are you afraid of your own mortality? I never used to be because I felt like I was further away from it. <laughs> now I'm older and I, you know, I do have a chronic illness and I feel like 40 to 50 is a really hard time in people's lives. Your parents are getting older. If you have children there, you know, things are just, it's a lot of change. I really thought in, in my early 20s, it's like, oh, I'm gonna be here forever. I had a great apartment with one of my best friends. I had a really good job that I loved. Best life ever. It was the best life ever. I was walking down the street and I just started getting some tingling in my legs. And I was like, oh, okay. And as I kept walking, I started to realize like, that I actually couldn't walk anymore. So I was going numb from the waist down. I had so many tests. You know, they just couldn't really find anything wrong. And the symptoms were always different. I'm tired now, my legs are numb, this is tingly, I have headaches or, you know, so it was really sort of destroying my life at that age because, you know, you can't fight what you can't see. I wanted to live a healthier lifestyle and I didn't know exactly how to do that. And when I looked at my bath and body products, I turned over the label and I couldn't pronounce anything. So I figured, you know, I'm gonna make some things myself. And I'm looking around my kitchen, I'm like, this is all the stuff I have here already. So I started making my bath and body products. I started eating differently, and I actually started to feel a little better. So it was like the first glimpse of hope I had in a while. Today we're gonna make some sugar scrubs. Sugar is great, it's a natural exfoliator. 
It wasn't supposed to be a business. It was just something that I was doing to be a little healthier. It's that a, turned into a business. It's the accidental entrepreneur exactly. story, right? Exactly. exactly. Take me through how you go from being, this is for me, this is for my friends, and now it becomes something right. that is for absolute strangers. Right. And, and I think it was that first festival that we went to. We set up the table and we sold out. You know, like this is stuff I made in my kitchen on my stove and people are purchasing it. That feeling right there, that was, that was, like I'll never forget that feeling. What does your dad say? At the beginning, he was kind of like, so what, what is this you're doing here? My parents were always supportive, like, okay. My father, great business mind. But I could see he wasn't really getting it. Oh, it's hand cream and stuff. But afterwards, he looked at me like, it's pretty good, Dawn. I'm like, yeah, Dad, this is, he's like, then he started to realize, as did everybody, like, we just started a business. I was good for maybe about a year, and I started to get that feeling in that I couldn't feel my hands and feet. And it just deflated me. I was like, okay, something is still wrong. So I got up and I went to the emergency room. And um, it's so funny, after all the doctors that I had seen, this one doctor saw a spotting on the brain. He's like, you have MS. I thought I was gonna be paralyzed. There would be nights that I would wake up in the middle of the night and like sit up and see if I can move my arms and legs. I would have symptoms. It'd be like lightning and it would shoot down both arms and they would just be paralyzed for like 30 seconds. But at those points, I was like, this is it. It's beat me. I've done everything I can do. This project is really a, a blessing. But I'm very close to my dad. So doing this portrait, I keep putting myself in Dawn's shoes. What would I want? What would I want to see? I hope that it can give them some comfort. I mean, they've lost their rock and somebody who was so important to them. I did suffer a few tragedies close together. My mother died, and then my brother died in his sleep at 44. It was a shock for me. It's at those moments where maybe you forced to stay home and just think and assess, so what am I gonna do? And you go back to what you know. You just have to like discover it somehow. Dawn found hers through a profoundly life-altering illness that made her change her life. And I found mine through the loss of somebody who had impacted my life. But it depends on what you want. My father's favorite statement was some people watch it happen, some people make it happen, and some people wonder what happened. And that, that's what I started telling myself, you can be different. There are people who are in a wheelchair with MS and there are people who live to 90 and it doesn't affect you. You're gonna be one of those people. You only get one life. You gotta make it really good. Having my own business was wonderful. I never felt that I was alone. Um, I always had so much family and friend support. There was never even a thought that we're not gonna do this anymore because Dawn's sick and it's her business and if she can't do it, that's the end. They're like, no, this is our business. All right, Dawn's down for the count right now, so what do we need to do? They were going through it with me and I know that it hurt them just as much as I was struggling through it, but I was thankful to have, like my family, my family rocks. <laughs> People have invested time, money, energy into this business and into me. So I feel a responsibility to make it work. So we're gonna build like four tables right in the front. That's all gonna be workshop space. MS has the capacity to stop me from working. I need to really make sure that this business, if I'm not here or if I can't do anything, can run independent of me. Life insurance, it's peace of mind. And life insurance will help me take care of my family if I'm not here. My dad was gonna be 80. Like, what a blessing to be here 80 years. I mean, it still hurts, but to see it up close and to see, like, this was the first time I actually had to go to a funeral home and plan a funeral, that would be a lot to, to put on my family. And now go over here and take care of all her business and take care of everything that she was supposed to do. That's just too much. Whatever happens, everybody else is gonna be okay. I've taken care of what I need to take care of. So that gives me the confidence to grow the business, to take risks that I probably wouldn't take, whether it fails or whether it prospers, and I'm saying it's gonna prosper, that it'll be taken care of. 
there's pieces of everybody in Puka, which I love. You know, there's something that my dad did. There's something that he, you know, this, he ships this way. And, you know, my mom decorates this and my sister does this. So everybody has a little piece of it. And hopefully it'll be, you know, something that just lives on. I want everybody that put in something to Puka, get something out of it. This was for all your hard work and, you know, your sacrifice. And for believing in me, this is for you. This is just, and this is everything that was important to him. All of his family, it's we're all. Isn't that amazing? Your entire story mm. is about family and how beautiful it is. It's like you guys are my new sister and brother now. <laughs> <laughs> this is my other sister and brother, Alan <laughs> Visa. Oh boy. We had so many blessings in the business. And my father was the biggest one. He was just really always proud. Everyone has made our family a masterpiece, and it's definitely sewn in love. I'm there for them, they're there for me. It's a good feeling to have that. It's, it's a blessing. Fitch just shared her masterpiece of love, and now you can too. Visit our interactive heart to join the growing community of people uploading photos and writing tributes for their loved ones. You'll honor the legacy of someone important to you as you think about the legacy you'd like to leave behind.